Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi and welcome to SEL, the subject, composition and light photography podcast. My name is Rob from RobLoveFur.com and this is my little audio diary about my journey through the wonderful world of photography. Unfortunately I haven't got any news from the car boot this morning, there wasn't really anything there worth buying. Um, there was the odd little uh, camera and stuff but nothing I hadn't seen before so I kind of made a pass on that. It's also the end of the month so it's kind of skin tight. Um, However, I have had a great two weeks off with Suzanne and Oliver, and I've been really lucky to go out and um, go on some fantastic photo walks over the last few days. Um, but they kind of, no, well, not every day, Suzanne. <laughs> Three days. I every, went out for like day. ten days. <laughs> every day. Anyway, but I've been really lucky. I've gone out and I've had fairly good light. Very lucky. Um, and, uh, but these are photos, <laughs> photo walks a bit of a difference. Because one of the difficult things you come across, obviously, is you get to a point where you end up getting pretty bored because you're visiting the same locations because they're near to you. So you need different ideas in terms of what you're going to shoot. And that's why things like our photo assignment on um, the recession has been really good. Because it kind of gets you thinking about di different areas of town, maybe, that you haven't been before, or different subjects you haven't looked at before. But... Also, you've probably got yourself several photos in your head that you know that you want to take. Maybe they're images of scenes that um, you've seen on the way to work or the way to college or school, um, and you've driven past them or walked past them and you thought, yeah, God, I wouldn't mind taking a photograph of that. Or maybe it's a particular type of photograph that you want. You have to excuse me, she's having sitting on her computer about five feet away from me, and she's just laughing and giggling. So she'll probably come over, you'll probably hear her, so... There we go, I'm just going to take a quick drink of coffee. <laughs> so, um, what are you laughing for, Suzanne? <laughs> she won't say. So, as I was saying, you've probably got all these photographs in the back of your mind, and um, because they've seen them places you've seen, so I've got to go back and take those pictures, maybe yeah. because at the time you've been in the car and you've been able to stop and stuff like that. And that was what was different about these photo walks. Um, I was going to a specific location where I was going to wander around and take photographs of anything that kind of caught my eye. But what I was also going to do was hunt out those places that I knew that I wanted to take a picture of. Um, and so what I'd like to do today is go through some of those photos, just talk about them, what, where the ideas kind of came from, and um, discuss sort of the things that, that fired me up to take the <laughs> <laughs> take these pictures and uh, maybe encourage you to kind of scratch that itch when you get that impulse to go and take a photograph. Okay. Don't, don't put it to the back of your mind and ignore it. Make sure you go out and take that photograph because you feel a lot better for it. And some of these shots, I think, are often the most interesting ones. And once you've done them as well, you can move on and take photographs of uh, different things. So, basically, one of the first ones uh, that I... Um, went out on was a photo walk where I went to um, Fort Bro around Fort Brockers, which is the Victorian fortification that's pretty near to, to where we are, and then I went up to um, Newgate Lane, which is one of the main roads out of Gospel. Um, now the Fort Brockers sort of shots were kind of really just, it was just to get out shooting, I also have my new phone with me. I wanted to take some photographs of that just to kind of start testing it out, um, but it was also kind of get me back in the in the in the routine of shooting because when you haven't been out for a few days with your camera, you kind of get a little bit rusty, and um, it helps just to go out, and take a few shots, maybe of pretty common things. The other thing I knew I wanted to do as well is we're doing the uh, theme of recession over on the Flickr photo group, and there's a little industrial estate by Fort Brockhurst, and I thought that would be quite good, so I took a few shots around there which, which were okay. However, the next three shots I took that I'll put um, in the show notes over on robinonfoto.com, and if you're watching the video, you'll see them appear in just a moment, were shots that I definitely had an idea for previously in my mind, or two of them I did, and the third one I had a good idea. Um, the first one's um, a kind of collection of cherry pickers or, or cranes up on uh, 
this in this higher place over on um, <laughs> near Asda on Newgate Lane, and whenever we go shopping, which is several times a week, um, you kind of park up and you look across it, and it's it's a uh, it's a builder's yard type thing where they've got all these machines they hire out. But what they do is all the cherry pickers they have them all up and and pointing in different directions, and it's always quite an interesting thing to see. I don't want one taking a decent picture of that. So I drove up there and I was like having a look around and thought, right, I'll, I'll have a go and I'll take that particular shot. Oliver just come through the door now, so he's... Hello Oliver, how you doing? Oh, yeah, I'm going to get my bit next. Okay, make sure you look out the other bikes yeah. Okay, dude. Okay, thanks Oliver. Love you. Okay. Love you, Mom. Love you, Suzanne. Carchi. <laughs> And uh, so anyway, so I thought right, I got there, and, I, I, and you know when you've got an idea in your head, I, I wanted the frame. Well, you didn't tell me I had these, explosive diarrhea. Of these um, cherry pickers all around, um, and in the end, I went for like a telephoto shot just to kind of have them filling up, and I, and I kind of did it, and I'm sort of happy with the photo. I might in fact go back and have another. The second photo was one of the um, DIY Superstore Focus that was shut down last year, and this kind of ties in with the recession theme on the uh, Flickr Photo Group. And I knew that this Focus has got a big car park in front of it, and I wanted to use a wide-angle lens, given the pressure of the fact that you had this big Superstore with this massive car park that was completely empty. Um, and that was another thing where, basically, when I got there, there was this... You kind of go in from the side... And I took a few shots, sort of close up of the building, and then kind of worked my round, way around. I kind of worked the whole of the car park, taking photos from different angles and different fo- different focal lengths as well. And I tried to use the lines of the car park, the lines of the of, of the markings, to kind of lead your eye into 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 the shop. Um, I'm pretty happy with the photograph. It kind of says you know emptiness. The only problem with it is it's not really clear that the superstore is shut down because it's, it's so small in the image but it's obviously the car park is empty so, so that's kind of related now the next one was a tree on Newgate Lane and I passed this tree driving to, to and from work loads of times and normally in the morning I think oh when there's a sunrise kind of behind it I think what a great silhouette this tree has um, so I parked up fairly close to the tree and then I had to make my way there and then it was again it was a case of I could see the picture in my mind of this the, the silhouette of the tree against a bright sky. And this was in the afternoon, not in the morning, though, so I knew it was going to be in black and white rather than the colour. And then it was just a case of hopping over a fence and just, just working the subject, getting to a focal length and a position where I could kind of get, get the whole of the, the tree in the photograph but not have the lower branches kind of... Mold, um, disappear into the bushes that are underneath so you can imagine I had to go fairly low um, but I, again I couldn't get too close because then I couldn't fit everything in with the wide angle lens so, so that seemed to work okay so that, that was great um, so not only was it kind of a random photo walk that particular day but the ideas of the recession photo uh, Simon and these sort of pictures I've had, sort of bump, have had bumbling around in my head for the last um, few months so it drove me to do that as well now what I am going to talk about a lot uh, in more detail in a future podcast is the um, JJC off-camera flash units that I've been playing around with. Um, but I also got a chance to, to, to use those on six photographs of myself and Suzanne and Oliver as well. Um, because for ages, since I've kind of got into uh, looking at David Bailey's photographs or uh, Abaddon's photographs, one of the most striking black and white types, and they had colours as well, but mostly black and white type of portraits I really like, are the ones with the, the really white background, and then with kind of quite a high contrast um, headshot normally, or head and shoulder shot in, in, in the foreground as well. I really like that. And I knew I need probably needed off some sort of flash system to be able to do this. One, to be able to make the background really, really white, to blow it out. And then a further light source to then light my subject, have like my, my key light. Um, if you don't want the, if you want the, you can have the background as grey if you, if you don't light it. But if you want really really white so it blows out, you've got to do it that way. And so in my head I've had this this image of the David Bailey type shots. And uh, again I'll put uh, an example, well I'll put examples in, in the show notes. And I think I'm most to kind of move towards there. What, what you find is whenever you're doing something like this, you think. Yeah, it'd be easy, wouldn't it? All I need is some off-camera flash. 
and then you come around to doing it and you, you suddenly realize well, actually this is a bit more difficult than I first thought with the angle of the flashes you know the distance the, the, the zoom you put on the flash um, the, whether you're using a reflector or maybe a diffuser in front of the flash and um, focal length you use and all this sort of stuff it all suddenly becomes a quite complicated uh, thing to do but again that that vision I've had previously in my, my brain from looking at David Bailey and Abaddon shots drove me to do those. And the final photo walk I went on um, a couple of days ago was to um, uh, Fairham. Um, and I started off in Leon Soland and a couple of things were driving uh, my reasoning going to Fairham. I wanted to take a picture of the big Tesco store that's opened up recently. Again, that's part of the recession photo assignment because it's, it's a balance of the fact that you've got all these little stores shutting down, but big multiples like Tesco's, which is the biggest supermarket chain in the UK, um, are opening up still and obviously gobbling up these little stores. And I knew that there were some stores that were, were shut down, but also there's some rather interesting... Um, bridges, uh, old railway bridges that have nice arches and I like the angles and the shapes because I drive past them every day uh, and so I'll, I'll put a few video, a few videos, a few uh, photos in the uh, in the show notes but that photo, photo walk was a particularly interesting one because it was kind of a mix of the two that uh, for example there was a um, a nice picture of a, somebody waiting, a chap waiting at a, a bus stop um, and then obviously then there was the Tesco photograph as well um, and um, let me just go forward on Flickr a little bit so that I can get into the other ones and talk about them. Let's have a look. <laughs> There's one of an outside toilet. I did, well, it wasn't an outside toilet. It's a toilet that's been left outside, but it kind of looks like you could use it. It's just kind of sitting there. But then I had the um, these these rail, railway arches. And I, one of the things I, I put in my... I, I keep little notes about sort of projects for 2012 and, and my photography in general. And one of the things I've always, I always keep saying to myself is a photo without a person in it is, is really half, is half empty. You know, it's not finished. One of my, you know, one of my heroes is Henri Cartier-Bresson and his idea of the fact that his photography was, when he talked about it, one of the things was about having the intersection of geometry, so the scene, with the decisive moment which normally is, is people in the scene and, and those two things coming together so I'm trying really hard to make sure when I take these photos of, of geometric landscapes or well cityscapes it's not normally man-made stuff it can be geometrical I try and make sure there's a person in it somewhere and so I've got this shot of this railway arch if you imagine we're looking straight through the railway arch and there's a tree in the middle and there's a chap on a bicycle and I quite like quite like that and there's another one of a uh, shop this kind of brings everything in together we've got this shop that's shut down it's been boarded up and it's quite a nice high building nice and white and it was a nice blue sky so I've made it darker in black and white and then there's a person walking in front of it and, and, and that's quite cool and then the final shot is of uh, a couple walking along down at Leon Solent and it was a very misty well like a heat haze in the background and there's a little yacht going on um, and that's kind of a little bit rule of thirdsy you know everything seems to be there but it's quite Quite pleasing, uh, pleasing shot over there. So, as you can see, those photo walks were were driven by kind of three things: going to a location and just taking photos of things that caught my eye, um, the recession idea, the project, the sort of assignment over on the Flickr photo group, and also the idea of taking pictures of things that I'd seen previously that, that I wanted to take photographs of. So when you're kind of getting stuck for ideas of about what things you want to photo, always you know keep in mind these things. Keep, keep in mind sort of themes you can take photographs of, going to new places, but also visiting those places you've seen before that you haven't take, taken shots for. And one of the best pieces of advice I can give you is write those ideas down. Keep a note of them. Maybe it's on your on your mobile phone. Maybe you've just got a note paper. So when you think, okay, I've got half an hour. I've got an hour where I can go go out and shoot. What do I do? You flick open, and you, I mean, one of the things I do actually, I'll, I'll ask Suzanne, and she'll say something to me like, "Why don't you go and do this?" And I might say, "Well, no," but then that will trigger another idea off in, off in my head as well. Now it's time for a word from our sponsor, GoToMeeting, um, because uh, GoToMeeting offer a online. Um, it's, it's like a conference call that you you do over your PC um, that you you speak to people. Um, obviously over um, a Skype-like interface, but you can also see their faces using 
video conferencing because being able to attach a face to a name is really important. It enhances our relationships and the way we do business. Unfortunately, though, meeting all of your clients and colleagues in person can be impossible, let alone really expensive. That's why I recommend GoToMeeting with HD Faces. It lets you meet face-to-face from anywhere in the world. So how does it work? Well, with GoToMeeting by Citrix, all it takes is a webcam and a click to collaborate in group HD video. You can see your attendees eye-to-eye while collaborating on documents in real time. You'll feel instantly connected even if you're thousands of miles apart. Plus, GoToMeeting is easy to set up and simple to use. We use GoToMeeting um, for like a demo before um, we, we had them as a sponsor over on uh, techpodcast.com and it really is amazing. You've got to try it out and uh, you, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. So you can start hosting your own face-to-face online meetings today with GoToMeeting and everybody can try it free for 30 days. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click on the Try It Free button and use the promo code PODCAST. Make sure you use that promo code podcast. And we thank um, GoToMeeting by Citrix for sponsoring the SEL Photography Podcast. Now, I had another interesting question from Ian about camera mounts. Um, and he said, uh, Rob, could you tell me the difference between AF, EF, and EFS mounts? Because he's on Canon then. Uh, as I've seen on Amazon, there are two types of lenses, an AF and an EF mount. I would be intrigued to know. Well, throughout the development of cameras and lens systems, there's been a myriad of ways of connecting them together. So I'll cover a few today to get you kind of started off and to answer uh, Ian's um, Ian's question. So we'll start off with his question, which was about Canon, about Canon cameras. And again, what I'm talking about here is SLRs, cameras, not like rangefinders or anything like that. So these are SLRs. So with Canon SLRs, basically you've got Cameras that were made before Canon started using autofocus and ones that were made after they started using autofocus. So all the cameras that were manual focus, we had to turn the camera to focus them, um, were were, were FD mounts, basically. Um, And then Canon introduced autofocus and changed the mount. So all those lenses that used to fit um, the, the manual ones didn't fit anymore. Now, I have talked in a previous podcast about adapters. We're going to talk about that today. Um, so cameras like the AE1 used um, FD mount lenses. Then you have autofocus was introduced, and then we've got a new range of bodies and a totally new range of lenses as well. Um, and these were called by Canon EF, electronic focus lenses. And these will fit all of the EOS models, all the film models and uh, digital models. So if you've got a digital SLR and you're looking for Canon lenses, first off, they've got to be EF lenses. As long as they're EF lenses, you'll be okay. Canon ones will probably work, unless they're their fault. However, when digital came along, because the sensor inside a digital camera is smaller than a 35mm piece of film, this gave uh, the, the camera and lens manufacturers an opportunity to make a smaller lens. Um, because it didn't have to to, to, to illuminate a, a such a, a bigger area. And this was called EFS. I guess you could call it electronic focus small, but I don't know what the proper, proper name is. Now, EFS lenses were designed specifically for crop sensor bodies. So these are digital cameras that have smaller sensors like 350D, 450D, 550D, 600D, 60D, 70D... Um, <coughs> Uh, 7D, all, all those particular ones, anything that isn't full frame. And these EFS lenses will not fit, fit and won't work on film camera bodies, um, EOS film camera bodies, or full frame like 5D Mark IIs or 5D Mark III as it is now. Um, so that, that's it really. So if you've got a Canon digital body, you want to be looking for EFS lenses and EF lenses, as long as they're made by Canon. Because with some of the older lenses, especially the ones made by Sigma, for the film SLR system, for the Canon EF film SLRs, they won't work on the new digital SLRs because they had to put a chip inside them. Um, and Sigma decided not to do that, which means they won't work with, with newer ones. So buyer beware with things like that. Um, and if you're buying off something like eBay, I would say if it's a Sigma or a Tamron lens, email them and say, look, will this work on a Canon uh, digital 
body and also do a little bit more research on the web as well because if they're a bit unscrupulous they might say well yeah of course it does and in fact it doesn't but the rule of thumb is when you're buying, buying lenses for your digital SLR get Canon ones and get Canon EF or EFS if it's a uh, digital body and you won't go wrong at all now what's next Nikon now Nikon use the F mount which hasn't changed since 1959 which is really good so there's a massive choice of new and old glass available for film and digital but the functions of different lenses vary enormously depending on the age and the camera you've got so although the mounts might be the same make sure you check um, because for example um, the uh, Nikon cheap 50mm f1.8 lens the cheapest one they do um, doesn't have an autofocus motor in it, which means that if you put it on something like a D40 or a D70, a D40, sorry, it won't autofocus because it needs a, a motor in the body, and the D40 doesn't have that. So you know, just, I mean, that isn't the end of the world. You can still focus manually, but just check these things. I mean, I'm a Nikon shooter now as well. I've got the um, that, that Nikon film camera I picked, picked up last week that I'll test in the next next few weeks. So, but, but double, do double check if you're buying older lenses for a Nikon camera that it will work with your body and specifically metering is the thing that might not work so it might have to go to manual metering and we get you again it's, it's fine but or it may be something you're not looking for in a, in a piece of glass especially if you're having to spend a few quid on it now Nikon also make crop sensor lenses uh, like Canon it's still the F mount so it's still the same size but the, the frame covers a smaller area, and they call it DX, and their full frame lens is called FX lens. Um, so things like the D40, D70, D90, 5000, the 7000, etc. Now what's interesting about Nikon's way of doing it, is their DX, or crop sensor lenses, the smaller, lighter ones, still fit the, still fit the full frame FX bodies, um, like the D700, D800, a D3 and everything and what the camera does is it recognises the fact that it's an FX body and then only uses that knows to only use the middle bit of the frame and then you just get a, an image with less resolution so I think that's uh, really really clever moving on finally to Sony um, Sony have got the legacy of Minolta um, uh, because uh, Minolta you know, used to be one of the biggest camera manufacturers in the world changed to autofocus like Canon they binned all their old lenses and came out with a, a new lens mount called the A mount um, and went to autofocus and then when Konica and Minolta were bought by Sony that system, that A mount, which became the alpha mount was continued um, so if you've got a Sony DSLR any of the old, old Minolta autofocus AF lenses should fit and work if they're the older um, manual focus lenses they won't, they won't, won't fit um, so I've kind of just really scratched the surface of, of, of that uh, subject about uh, lenses, lens mounts and things. There's loads of information on the internet though, so if in doubt, Google it if you're looking at a particular lens on, on eBay or something like that that, that, you, that you're looking for. I mean, what I tend to do now, to be honest, is I, when you're looking for older lenses, really ask yourself if they're going to be any better. And... I've, I've kind of fallen in love with the IS lenses on Canon, like the 18 to 55 and the 55 to 250. The, re, the IS is really good, um, and I would definitely hesitate about spending any money on something like a 28 to 90, or even something like a 75 to 300, unless it was really cheap, because the advantage that IS gives you in being able to shoot at lower shutter speeds without getting um, camera blur is uh, is excellent. But you know, horses for courses, whatever's best for you. Right, well that's it for this week. Thanks to Everyday Jones who do the intro and outro music. You can find their stuff for free download at everydayjones.com. Most of all though, thanks to you for listening and downloading the podcast and watching on video if you are. And hopefully pretty soon I'll see you on Flickr. <laughs>